Hi, this is Lisa, and in this access tip, we'll talk about some of the key terminology you'll want to be familiar with once you have your database open. You may have already explored the tables. The tables are the most important access object because they store all of the data. And as you know, to open a table, or any object really, just double click it. By double clicking a table object, you open it in datasheet view. Datasheet view shows you every row of information called a record in Access, and every column called a field. In the lower left-hand corner, you know how many records are in the data sheet because the navigation bar tells you so. In this case, in the customer's table, there's 91 records and several fields across the screen. You press Tab or Enter or right arrow key or simply click on the data sheet to go where you want to go. I'm going to close the customer's table and look at some of these other object types. Let's explore the rest of the objects in the Access Database. So I'll collapse the Tables section. The Query object is a question about the data in the tables. For example, if I open up the Customer Orders query, I see one, two, three, four, five fields of information. So the question is, what company is ordering on what order date at what price and quantity and what's the product name? So that's basically the question, who is buying what? The who, the company name field, comes from the customer's table. Order date, unit price, and quantity, that all comes from the order and order details section of the database, those two tables, whereas the product name is stored only in the products table. So in this case, I've got several customers that have ordered this product name Chai. If I click on the last record, it appears that our records are sorted right now in product name order. If I click on the last entry of Chai, I can see in my navigation bar here that 38 customers have ordered chai. Now, the great thing about an Access database is no matter where you see data, if you edit it, for example, if I change any occurrence of chai to chai turbo T, and I move off that record, as soon as I write that record down to the database, as soon as this edit symbol goes away by me moving to another record, that data is written down to the database and reselected for this query for every customer. That somewhat proves to you that the chai entry was entered once and only once in the products table. It's simply been selected 38 times in this particular query because 38 people have, 38 customers have ordered that particular product. And we'll talk a lot more about that later. But here in a query, when we're selecting fields from multiple tables, you can start seeing some of the glorious benefits of a relational database. So queries are extremely important. Their questions about the data by selecting fields, one or more fields from one or more tables, and presenting it in a data sheet very similar to a table. But instead of seeing all the fields in each table, we're just looking at only the fields we've selected. In this case, we've got five selected fields for this particular question. Let's close up the query section. I'm going to right click and close the customer orders query and look at forms. Forms are data entry devices for an end user. You create forms as an interface, an easy to use interface for someone else. I'll open up the orders form because it's one of my favorites here in the Northwind database. And we can see that what this form represents is a little order form. If I choose uh, a new customer, then Access and Microsoft has built in some nice automation here so that as I choose a new customer, the ship to information automatically changes. Now I can, I can change that ship to information if the address for that customer changes. And I can certainly change the other things on the order, such as what customer took the order, what shipper we're going to use, and what products were ordered. I can add some Boston crab meat to this order at a quantity of 100 and a discount of 10%. And I can watch all these extended price subtotal and total numbers automatically change as I make that entry. So now I've, I've changed the order. I also have some wonderful command buttons here to display the products of the month or to print the invoice. So again, the purpose of a form is for you to give the database to someone else to do data entry and editing in a very easy to use way. It's an easy to use data entry screen for your database. That's your goal is to make the form so straightforward that it requires very little if any training for someone else to use. 
So let's close up our forms object and look at our reports. I'll right click the orders form and look at the reports. And the reports are just as you would probably expect. I'm going to open up the alphabetical list of products report and a report is a read only object. If I see a typo in a report, I can't change it. But a report is mainly for printed or electronic distribution of information. And it provides a lot of neat uh, formatting options in that I can have multiple headers. I can have graphics. In this case, I just have some simple lines. And I can group my records in different ways. In this case, the records are grouped by the first letter of the product name. So I have an alphabetical listing of them. Let's look at another report just to see what else is possible. How about the products by category? Oh, this is quite nice. Three columns, uh, a very nice header. We've got some subtotals so we know how many products. We're counting the number of products in each category. So I've got 11 beverages. I've got 11 condiments. I've got 13 confections. Quite nice. Those are the four main objects of an access database. Tables to store the data, queries which are a question about the data, forms which are a data entry device that generally show only one record at a time, but give the user an easy to use data entry device, and reports which provide a nice way to print or electronically distribute your information. The last two objects, macros and modules, help tie the different objects together in automated ways. A macro is simply a collection of commands, a stored collection of commands, and a module is actually a container for Visual Basic for Applications VBA code. Those are advanced objects. If you double click a macro, you actually run those actions. So typically when we're working with macros and modules, we'll right click the object and go in and look at its design view instead of simply double clicking and running that functionality. So that's an overview of the six types of access objects. Thank you.